You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Well, welcome today. Uh, I have with us uh, Susan Adrian, who is a uh, High Plains uh, uh, Book Fest finalist yeah. for her book, uh, Forever Neverland. Do I have that right? You have that right. Thank you. A lot of people Wonderful. with that one. <laughs> well, let's talk about the book in a minute. Let's uh, start out, though, maybe talking just briefly about you. Tell us sure. about yourself. I, I live in Butte. I have been in Montana for about 17 years. And before that, I lived in San Diego, which is where the characters in this book are from. So I knew a little bit about that. Um, my day job is as a scientific editor for the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology. I work on the Montana Tech campus. And um, I'm a mom. My daughter is starting college this month in Chicago. So that's our great excitement right now. And I have been writing for about 25 years, but I have uh, four books published, two young adult books and then two middle grade books. Uh, Forever Neverland is the most recent. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, tell us about the book. Sure. Um, Forever Neverland is the story of a brother and sister, a Clover and Fergus. And Fergus is autistic, and Clover is his older sister by one year. She is a little bit anxious and a lot bossy. She likes to kind of manage things. Um, they get sent to London to visit their estranged grandparents, grandparents they've never met, um, when their mother is taking the bar exam. So they go to London and they find out quite by accident that their grandmother is a descendant of Wendy from Peter Pan. And Peter can sense when any member of the family is there. That's actually in the last line of the original Peter Pan book that he will come back and take all the descendants of Wendy to Neverland. So Peter senses that they're there and he comes and he takes them on a grand adventure. So they have a, a wonderful adventure in Neverland with lots of ups and downs and I mixed it with uh, Greek mythology because that is, as, as an autistic person, that's Fergus's special interest. He's very interested in Greek mythology. And in, in my Neverland, um, the characters bring whatever they, they know and what they um, have in their own worlds to Neverland with them. It changes with who's visiting. So it gets kind of all twisted up with Greek mythology and adventure and Lots of fun. But I'm wondering, do you have experience with people who have autism? Um, it's interesting, actually. I didn't think that I did a lot. Um, and yet, the more that I did research and the more I dove into it, the more friends I discovered who were autistic, the more traits I discovered actually in myself and my family that um, I wouldn't call myself autistic, but I really related to a ton of, of the traits. So I found that um, there were a lot of things that I could latch on to, to um, express how Fergus feels. And then I did so much research from the point of view of autistic people. And, and I do absolutely um, want to make sure that that gets out there, that though I may not classify myself as autistic, I spoke to autistic people, I, I researched books by autistic people. I didn't do it from the point of view of caregivers or parents, which is quite a different perspective. And um, I did have the, the book was read by several autistic people at the end to make sure that, that I got the experience right. No, I, you know, I asked the question about the uh, experience with autism. I, my, uh, my career before I retired was as a uh, school psychologist. Oh, okay. So, I had a lot of, uh, oh heck, at, at my house we had summer camps for kids with autism and oh, learning disabilities. Great. So I have a lot of experience and I'm, I'm a little cautious, you know. You should be. That, for those you know, kids. Yeah. People, people get stuff so wrong and I can't even watch most of the TV shows that are out there because, you know, the autistic community, the people that I follow on social media tell me how bad they are. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes, they, yeah, you get this kind of cartoon character, you know, yeah. autistic kid, you know. That's the stereotype, and it's just, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't, I tried so hard not to do that. So I'm, yeah. I hope, you know, hopefully there's nothing, nothing in there that would be harmful to anybody. Yeah. 
Oh, very cool. So who's this book for? What, what audience do you have in mind for it? Is it too much to say everybody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say it's for kids who like adventure books, who like uh, fantasy stories, kids who like Peter Pan already because Peter's in the book. And, and um, in my story too, there's, there's lost boys, but there's also lost girls. And so that mixes it up a little bit. So it's not uh, for boys or girls, it's for, for anyone. And I would say that it's, it's for autistic kids. I actually have had a lot of autistic kids reach out to me who've read it, um, who feel that they're seen because there's not a lot of books with a first person autistic main character. So definitely that, but then also just neurotypical kids too. You know, it's, it's great to, to see different perspectives and kind of understand and get a little empathy. Well, you know, it, it may not be too much to say it's for everybody because I think well-written literature um, for whatever age can really be uh, good for adults as well as uh, children and youth, so. That's always the hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.